I'm Warren, co-founder at 33 Shake, and welcome to the 33 Shake vlog. On today's episode, we're going to be looking at salbutamol, asthma, and perhaps the biggest marginal gain that all Tour de France riders are missing out on right now. At 33 Shake, our mission is to deliver maximum value to endurance athletes. We do that on this vlog by sharing the best in endurance tips and tricks for nutrition, mindset, and performance. And we do it in store at 33shake.com with our awesome sports nutrition products. Now with that said, let's get on with the show. When I was a kid, no one knew what salbutamol was. Having been diagnosed as asthmatic, aged four, I got very used, very quickly, to explaining to teachers and friends just exactly what it was I was puffing on in class and why. Today, things are a little bit different, particularly if you like cycling. Um, I mean, first of all, there are more asthmatics around these days. I think the number of people receiving prescriptions for asthma meds has gone up threefold pretty much since I was a kid. Um, but on top of that, there has obviously been, unless you've been living under a rock, the uh, minor media incident stroke circus with uh, Chris Froome and his initial adverse findings for salbutamol subsequently overturned um, while he went through the Giro and has now got into the Tour de France. So we all know what it is. Uh, and we're not going to go any deeper on the Chris Froome thing. That has been done to death and no doubt will be for uh, years to come. Instead, what I wanted to look at here is pro cycling's relationship with asthma. Because give or take, 9% of the UK population are asthmatic to some degree or another. But when we turn to pro cycling, stats are showing figures around 40%. And really, that seems pretty strange. Um, it doesn't make a natural fit that asthmatics would gravitate towards what is probably the toughest aerobic sport on the planet. Um, why do they, why is this? What, what could a possible theory be? Well, maybe it's the fact that road cycling or cycling in general, it's a masochist's game. So uh, maybe these people just want extra pain. They've decided they're asthmatic, they're gonna make it even harder, gonna go and become a cyclist. That's a bit far-fetched though. Um, another theory is that the demands of pro cycling, basically breathing hard a lot outside, um, give rise to an unnatural or unusual incidence of asthma. Um, but if you look a bit closer at that, how many people commute on their bikes every day um, yet don't show loads more asthma? How many people among the amateur cyclists out there spend loads of time on their bikes? The data doesn't appear to match. Um, so that one's not looking so good. The most likely explanation for all this might just be the simplest. And this is that when a pro cyclist is tested for asthma, it's a little more in-depth and detailed um, than when the likes of the rest of us go to the GP and are asked to blow into a tube. Um, so first of all, their test is likely to be more detailed, but also what's being looked for is 100% lung function at maximum output. Now, if you put most people through that test, chances are the number who suddenly don't show up as having absolutely spotless, clean, 100% free-flowing airways may well get a bit higher. That could explain why you've got a lot more pro cyclists who are uh, diagnosed with asthma. Now, even if we go with all of that, how much that line of asthmatic or non-asthmatic can be gained for advantage or not, that is the subject of uh, an entirely different book, film, podcast, investigation, whatever you want to call it. Um, it is all dwarfed, however, alongside the much greater marginal gain uh, that's available legally and for free to absolutely everybody that the entire peloton is missing out on um, while all the excitement goes on around salbutamol. Because um, the thing about a steroid inhaler, like a salbutamol inhaler, uh, is that they come with a lot of side effects. Uh, they're only a sticking plaster, right? They are addressing the symptoms. They're not addressing the root cause. And then we've got this side effect issue. So what are the side effects uh, listed for salbutamol? The, the list is pretty long, but some, some highlights include headaches, anxiety, increased heart rate, irregular heartbeat, and ironically, severe breathing difficulty. 
Uh, prolonged high doses can even lead to something very nice called hypokalemia. Uh, and that can cause weakness, leg cramps, constipation, oh, and cardiac arrest. So not really something you want to be having. Um, not good for anybody, not good for athletes. Uh, regardless of whether you're getting a benefit from that salbutamol, uh, there's a downside for that, particularly the more you use it. So what about an inhaler-free asthma solution? Do you think such a thing exists? It sounds too good to be true, but it does exist. And what it's called is an absolutely awesome diet. Um, some foods promote inflammation. That's a bad thing. Other foods reduce inflammation. That's a good thing. And if you think of asthma as being an inflammatory condition, basically, your airways become inflamed, they become smaller, you become wheezy, less able to breathe. Um, being able to reduce inflammation through your diet, or on, on the wrong side, increase it, you can see how asthma could be affected. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to have less of the inflammatory stuff. What is that? Well, that includes dairy, like milk, cheese, and yogurt, alcohol, red meat, processed foods, processed sugars, and gluten. Uh, what about the anti-inflammatory stuff? Well, things on that list, you're gonna include things like beetroot, broccoli, pineapples, leafy green vegetables, olive oil, strawberries, almonds, kidney beans, good stuff like that. And you wanna take this a step further, okay? So you're gonna reduce the inflammatory stuff, you're gonna increase the anti-inflammatory stuff, and then after that, you wanna add antioxidant and anti-inflammatory superfoods to the mix to really take things to another level. Great examples of these include cinnamon, turmeric, sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds, raw cacao, chia seeds, ginger, flaxseed, and goji berries. Quite literally, a mouthful. So in summary, if you wanted a diet that would or could reduce asthma symptoms for free with no side effects, you'd be looking at getting rid of processed foods and dairy, reducing your alcohol intake, eating more fruit and veg, and then adding plenty of tasty superfoods, nuts and seeds into the mix. Next thing, your asthma would hopefully drop, uh, maybe enough that you'd even be able to get rid of those inhalers you were dependent on. Now, could something this simple really beat the marvels of modern science? The short answer is yes. Uh, now, for anyone who's thinking I've lost it and might just be bringing this to you from the inside of a communal teepee somewhere on a mountain while sitting under a crystal. Don't worry, this isn't quite as woo-woo and nonsense as it sounds. Um, I'm not anti-inhaler, and I'm not anti-modern medicine. Quite the opposite, because after all, it was those very magical inhalers, when I got them aged four, that for the next 25 years, taken twice daily, absolutely allowed me to have a completely normal quality of life, be totally active, and their stronger uh, injectable counterparts on two occasions got me out of some very, very sticky situations as a kid. So thank you, modern medicine. Thank you, inhalers, uh, without which I may not be here to bring you this today. So no, I've got nothing against them, but they are a sticking plaster. They're addressing the symptoms. They're not addressing the cause. When I began seriously reworking my diet in 2012, when we originally started formulating 33 shakes blends and the formulas that would initially go on to become our pre and post workout shake, this is where things really began to change for me. There was no other significant training or dietary change. I was already at a decent level running on ultra marathons, so my aerobic and overall fitness was pretty good. But as I began to add these ingredients into my diet, I began to forget taking my inhalers. This had never happened to me in some 35 years of being an asthmatic. Um, it didn't matter how fit I got, never been able to lose them. But as this continued, within a few months, I just didn't need them anymore. And for the last six years, I haven't touched an inhaler. No side effects, no nothing, didn't cost a bean, and I'm not asthmatic anymore. It's an absolute result. Now, there is no guarantee that this approach is gonna work for everyone. Um, and no doubt there's some asthma that won't respond to this sort of treatment and may still need drugs. But the beauty is, experimenting with a change like this to see if it can work for you if you have asthma or if you feel your lung function is slightly compromised and you wanna see if you can make it better. Um, doing this test is absolutely free. It has no downside. Last time I checked, 
fruits, vegetables, and, uh, and water basically don't have side effects. Uh, so you don't need to worry about that. It doesn't cost anything. You've got to buy some food anyway. You're just changing what you're buying and eating. Um, and there's an unlimited upside. Just think of the results that you could achieve. Basically, if this were a financial investment, we're talking no risk, all upside, and free. If this were a financial investment, people would be queuing around the block for it. Back at the Tour de France, maybe if the riders just stopped chucking down processed, sugary, crappy sports nutrition and ate a bit more fruit and veg, throw in some superfoods as well, maybe they could all go faster and be a lot happier and healthier into the bargain. It's just a thought. But anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching. And if you do give this a go, let us know how you get on. Uh, to connect with all things 33 Shake, you can join us on social media or you can drop us a line. All of our links and our contact information are in the notes below. Um, and uh, if you're after the absolute best in endurance nutrition for your running, your cycling or your swimming, then uh, head in store at 33shake.com. We've got exactly what you need. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.